This is a sun sensor I'm prototyping for my $1,000 CubeSat. It has four four quadrant photodiodes and this 3D printed X that sits in the middle of them. The rest of the circuitry on this board is just to support reading data off of these photodiodes. As always, hardware design files can be found linked in the description below. Sun sensors are simply a way of determining from which direction light is coming from. If you're a spacecraft, that light is usually coming from the sun. If you know the direction light is coming from, you can know where the sun is relative to you. And that can be useful in a number of attitude determination applications. The reason that I wanted to build this sun sensor was to see if I could make a cheap and accurate one. There are other sun sensors commercially available, but they all seem to be expensive. For example, I requested a quote for the Nano SSOC series of sun sensors, which are accurate to 0.5 degrees. The analog version costs over $2,000 and the digital version costs over $4,000. Now, I'm not saying that these sensors are priced unfairly. These are certainly high quality sensors with flight heritage and are drop-in solutions. I just wanted to build a cheaper one for myself. And that's not the only sun sensor available, there are a fair number of them on the market. Check out this blog post from SatSearch, which is linked in the description, if you're looking for a good write-up of the different categories of sun sensors and what products are available in those categories. Alright, with all of that out of the way, let's talk about this sun sensor. The actual light sensitive part is the K857PE. It is a four quadrant diode, which just means that it has uh, four photodiodes inside of it. And this sensor costs just about a dollar or a little bit over a dollar. And the idea behind this sensor is that this shade, this, uh, this 3D printed white X, would shade off different parts of the photodiode and which would allow you to determine which way the sun is coming in. Here's what I like about this sensor that I've built. It's cheap, it was easy to build and put together, it's easy to interface with, just an analog output signal, and it's relatively small, but notice how I didn't say accurate or high resolution. So let's get into that. To show you that the sensor does somewhat work, let me connect power to it. And you can see all these LEDs light up here. These LEDs correspond to these photodiodes. So these LEDs, these four map to these four photodiodes, that sort of thing. And if I turn on this light, you can see that if I point it such that it's really just light, lighting up these two photodiodes over here, you can see that just these two are lit up, where these are less lit up. And it might be a bit blinky on, on video, that's just due to how I'm powering these LEDs, but it should be good enough to get the picture that it does seem to detect which way light's coming in, or at least show up visually that these photodiodes are uh, receiving more light than these photodiodes. To get position data out of the sensor, I essentially just compare the relative brightness of all the photodiodes and graph a best fit plane. I then calculate the angle of the light based on how that plane is tilted. And let me show you what I mean. Let's assign XY coordinates to each of the photodiodes. Imagine that the 3D printed shade is sitting on the XY axis. We'll say that the intensity of the light received is represented in the z-axis. Here's what it would look like if there was no light, where z equals zero. And now let's graph it when light is received at a specific angle. With these points, we can create a best fit plane. In order to get this plane, I actually remap the photodiodes. The lowest light point here would actually correspond to the photodiode closest to the 3D printed shade, so they actually get flipped. And this is in order just for the linear algebra to work out better. Once I have a best fit plane, I can calculate a normal vector. I then normalize that normal vector and project it onto the XY plane. The XY values I get correspond to the angle of the incoming light. The full code for this and how I am actually implement it on my sun sensor can be found in my software repo on GitHub, which is linked in the description below. So that's the theory anyway. Uh, how well does this sun sensor actually work? Well, it can determine the direction that light is coming in, as I showed you 
with the LEDs, but since the shade only starts shading the photodiodes after 30 degrees, my linear algebra just doesn't have much to go on until light's coming in at 30 degrees. Essentially, this best fit plane is just flat until light's coming in at 30 degrees, so I'm getting a result that the light is coming in from directly above me, which just isn't true. But that's a solvable problem, right? I can make the shade bigger, I could move the photodiodes in closer, it's really just a geometry problem. But it's also a symptom of a larger issue, and that's the fact that I need to shade off these photodiodes, and I become constrained by uh, the geometry. Essentially, if I want a wide field of view using this arrangement, I would just need a whole lot more photodiodes to be shaded. And that means I need more photodiodes and that the size of the sensor needs to increase. And while this isn't particularly big, remember that a CubeSat itself is only 10 centimeters, roughly, and this is 3 centimeters already. So I really don't have that much more room to grow, and I really don't want to add complexity by adding another 12 four quadrant photodiodes to solve the solution to just eke out a little bit better performance. But let's say for the sake of argument that I do solve the geometry problem. The next issue is calibration. And this is a process that I really just don't want to spend a lot of time on. Ideally, I want to install the sun sensor, you know, solder it onto my board, install it, whatever I need to do, and then essentially be done with it. And that's just not going to be the case for a sensor of this kind, at least uh, an analog sensor that I have here. Since I'm comparing the relative values of each photodiode, uh, as you can see here, I'm, I'm literally just using these values to determine orientation. And since I'm comparing all of them, they all essentially need to be calibrated against each other. And I know that the, you know, the data sheet gives me a spec of how well these are going to do, but each photodiode is going to be a bit different. And I've already seen that the no light level is different per photodiode by just a little bit. And, you know, this is something that I would need to calibrate out. Also, just how these guys are mounted, if they're, you know, twisted a little bit when I solder them onto the board, you know, that impacts exactly how the readout happens. If this 3D printed X isn't, you know, exactly square, or exactly straight, like that impacts the measurement as well. These are all things that I would just need to calibrate out, which can be done. I'm not saying that it's an impossible thing to do, but it requires more time than I want to put into it. Yeah, it's, it's an issue. Anyway, that is all to say that this is not how you design a sun sensor. I still like the idea of some sort of shade-based sun sensor, because I think it opens up the possibility for less calibration. A distinct lit up or not lit up signal is, a, is something that's easy to interpret and determine information from, and that leads me to this recently published paper. And I know that this isn't a new idea. I mean, certainly there are digital sun sensors that were listed in the SAT search article that I mentioned earlier. I even thought about going down this route before I decided to make this sun sensor, but I was lured in by the idea of these $1 photodiodes, and I also really didn't want to implement another spy protocol to read data from another sensor. A bit of laziness on my part, but what can you do? But the style of digital sun sensor over an optical array, um, I think I might try that out next. It's still low cost. Those optical sensors that are used in the paper are only $13 each which I know, I know, 13 times more expensive than these guys, but I think that's, uh, <laughs> that's within the budget, of, uh, and it's something reasonable to try out for the $1,000 CubeSat. Anyway, that is all I have for now. I'm continuing to work on the avionics board, and that will likely be the topic of my next video. Thanks for watching.